How the hell are you? Welcome to the Ken Norton Jr. or Dick Buckus 51st edition of The Other Side of the Ball. Double A Anthony Alvarez here with you. And, uh, well, uh, a lot of our panel is still on assignment. So it's me and Chris once again. Uh, holding it down. Holding it down until the panel gets back, even though in a couple of weeks you'll be on assignment. For the next two, man. And, and what sucks is, you know, 52 and I'll be... <clears throat> what did you do? Um, right after that. Just for, so for next week when you're doing your 50-second show, keep me in mind. I'm going to call in just to give you guys crap. And, of course. Uh, you Which know. you can see the number on the bottom, of, well, now on the top of your screen, 702-608-3259 if you want to chime in on anything that is the American Sevens Football League. Um, we do have some guests in the house. Actually, we have a guest with us right now um, from one fellow Bay Area native to another, Mr. Bobby Salise of the Las Vegas Alienators is in the house. How are you, sir? So. Pretty good. So uh, give the viewers, um, give us a little background, give us a little bit of your story and how you got involved with the A7FL. Okay. Um, uh, it's kind of a deep story in okay. terms of, I, uh, you know, I lost my mom and my sister. And so I'd actually climbed into a real deep hole. Hmm. And um, my buddy Nick plays called me on, um, on Memorial Day and said, man, you need to come out. You need to come out and just get some barbecue. Let's, you know, come back out. Come back out. So I came out, and then while he was there, he was on a couple conference calls. And I'm listening. And then he turned around and he said, Rob, because I do marketing, promotion, um, I'm currently in development with a film project called uh, Hella High the Movie, Aliens Weed in Las Vegas. and." Um, so he was like, "Don't you get a team?" And I said, "What?" But see, when he said it on everything, I heard my sister in my left ear say, "Go, brother." I heard my mother in my right ear say, "Figure out you ain't did this before." And I just watched the action, and I start coming, and I got, I came alive again. I was like, "Man." They, they, they really hidden. They, you know. So which game were you watching that, you know, it, it all came into fruition? What, what game was that? I got to give it to them. Them Insomniacs. Oh, the, champ, watching, the championship watching, game? Yeah, I was watching the Champs. playoffs. I was watching the playoffs. I was watching. That's what had me, like, stuck. I said, they really out here with no pads, no helmets either. And them boys doing it. So it's just, it was just a lot of, you know, just a lot of good feelings about it. And so. Sucks you in, doesn't it? Yeah, I decided. I, <laughs> it, really, yeah. it really does. No, it really yeah, does. It really yeah, does. Yeah, I decided to say, man, if this is what I do, I've been dealing with artists and rappers and stuff for years. This is another situation to give opportunities to another group of youngsters to do something else and have some fun at the same time. So how did the <clears throat> Alienator's name and the logo come about? Um, well, basically, you know, Las Vegas have been having a lot of sighting. Correct. And landing. And so basically, I just told people that that's my team. That's actually my team landing here. And so, <laughs> and, that's uh, that's create. That, yeah. That's a slogan right there, folks. Yeah. And so basically, uh, it's it's one of the biggest tie-ins to a film that you can ever do. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it was obvious. Las Vegas aliens. The Alien movie aliens. was already there. So you know, when when I was sitting down talking, I actually told my buddy, uh, shout out to Cliff. I told Cliff. Um, Man, I'm thinking about getting a football team. And he's like, what? He said, what you going to call it? And then so we was just talking. He said, me call it the Alienators. I was like, I said, yeah. I said, yeah, it goes with that. He said, it goes with everything you're doing, alienation this, alienation that. So the football got to be the Alienators. And so I thank Cliff for that. I probably would have got around to it, but Cliff, the one that came with the name. And then there's in terms of the logo, that was, uh, you know, that was just me. You know. I don't know, man. Your alien has some awful high cheekbones. That's me. <laughs> That's me. There we go. I just said it. It's me. <laughs> um. So, obviously, you guys are working and preparing for the fall, which is December the third, which will be here sooner than we think. Yes, it will. Mm, don't um, remind me. <laughs> so, um, from the roster you've put together, um, is there anybody in camp that we need to? pay attention to and keep our eyes on for the upcoming fall season? Or do you just want to surprise us? To be honest, it's not much of a surprise. I'm putting all them together. I'm, I'm seeing who, 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 who the strikeouts and who the ones that's going to go. I'm putting that together now. So I'm watching everybody, you know, just how they respond, their commitment level uh, to, uh, to the team, to the, you know, 
to uh, to when I call meetings, to when I make phone calls and things like that. So I'm looking first for the commitment levels. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of people. But when I start saying A7FL, people are like, oh. I'm like, hold on. Oh, they're wrong? hesitant. Oh, pff, mm. Man, I don't know. I just had people spin off on me. When I say, oh, no, man, no pads on helmets. I say, what? I say, oh, yeah. So I definitely need gladiators. So I've been going through, you know, I done lost five. Five good guys to doctors. You know oh. what I'm saying? So I'm like real upset about that. So I'm real intent on replacing them. But I got, I, I got so far who I got. Yeah, we, 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 I think we're going to do it. You know what? It, it takes a person of a different mentality to play our game. Yeah, for sure. It really exactly. does. And, you know, for me, coming from a flag league and a flag background, um, Unfortunately, we didn't have these opportunities. Right. Right. When I was playing. Uh, but the type of uh, flag we played, teams would come here <clears throat> for um, Bill Williams, God rest his soul. He used to do his tournaments here in January. Okay. And so we used to play in the tournaments. And teams would come from all over the U.S. to play in these tournaments. Right. And they hated playing the Vegas teams. Why? Because we were physical as hell right we wanted to you might as well just said look impose your will yeah we, you might as well just say hey flags are just there for show <laughs> because we hitting you and right. taking your flag <laughs> and we took pride in matter of fact there was a point in time when there was a chat room for pancaking people okay. and that was that was like our deal Okay. You know, who got pancake today, okay. you know, and we talked about that at nauseum and we'd laugh about stuff and we'd, we'd have all kinds of fun. But bottom line is pretty much everybody who played in the league back then, if we had this situation and we could do this, I'd have been all in. Right. My wife would hate me, but I'd be all in. <laughs> you definitely would be all in and probably be in the doghouse at the same time. I'm oh, sure. man, I, shh, dude, I wouldn't be in the doghouse. I'd be looking for another place to live. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mama would be like, hey. Come on now. We talking full tackle, no pads, no helmet? Yes, but it's rugby-style tackling. Right. And if you can understand that, I used to like to hit. So coming from a wide receiver standpoint, I was, you know, I could play wide receiver or I could block. And my thing was it didn't matter if it was defensive ends, if it was corners or safeties. Man, I'm trying to put you on your ass. That's right. I don't care how we, you know, we playing, this is football. That's right. You know, and I used to tell when guys would complain, I'd be like, hey, man, Powder Puff plays on Saturday. <laughs> you want to come out here and play with the girls, you go play on Saturday, man. We, we This is this is men football. That's this right. is man football. You you don't want to play? Hey, find someplace else to do, to go or something else to do on Sundays. Bobby, yeah. did you play ball yourself when you were younger? <clears throat> yeah, a little bit in high school, and then I busted my ankle, and then after that I got disgusted because I couldn't go back. And play. What was your position? Um, I was defensive lineman. Mm. And so it, it was it in the was, trenches. It was hit. It was it was hit. Castle Mountain High School. Okay. Yeah. I'm so. with you, man. Broken ankle. Yeah. <laughs> got one. Got had one too. <laughs> the one that told me, nope, you can no longer play this sport. Oh no, man. The one that told me I can no longer play this sports at home right now. <laughs> well, you are a smart man for listening. <laughs> Shout out to Tammy. <laughs> she she's like, when, are they going to start a senior league? Maybe you could get in on that. I'm like, man, really? I hate you right now. But that's my wife, man. Love you. Even though you're giving me a hard um, time. So obviously, you obviously want to win, which is why you got involved here. Um, what, also, what are you also trying to accomplish now that you are throwing your head into this league that is the A7? Um, one thing that I did notice, I mean, this is a gladiator sport. It this is. should be something that, I mean, a spectator sport. And what I noticed when I start coming to the games towards the championship, even the championship, the lack of, you know, and it was just the crowd. I mean, and, and, and I've seen it in some of the players' chats where they say it got to be a, something a little bit more than just the players because if the players, all you're doing is bringing your family, but there needs to be the energy of this sport. And since I come from a marketing and promotions background, I didn't say it's up on, on Instagram, and, and some of y'all might bite me for it, but I believe we'll be the most promoted team on this league by the time I get finished with it. I don't doubt that. Because I deal with uh, sponsors and um, investors. Well, I'll tell you what, man. The, the One of the biggest things, and I don't know if you were at the championship game down there. Yes, in, I was. Okay. Yeah. So you saw 
yeah. how that crowd was right, exactly. off the chain. Right. I mean, it should have been more. It should have been bigger. It should have been more. It's this he, right here. Once I got to look at it, and then I come for marketing and promotion concerts, I'm like, man, it need to be butts and seats. It need to be dun dun dun. This yeah. this is incredible. I mean, but I mean, think about this. Without that, right? Without you know um, a real, um, I don't want to say a heavy push because there was. But think about the amount of people that were there. Oh, yeah. But how loud it was. Yes. It was. Yeah. And yeah. for the amount of people that yeah. were there. And they enjoyed the game thoroughly. I mean, I didn't see not one person, even after the game was over, right. not one person left the damn stands for like 15, 20 minutes. That's true. That's so, true. I mean, when we start to see this, and, and I see, you know, we're at the infancy stage still in my eyes, we're right. only two years in. Right. Right. And we're getting ready to start our third. And Vegas has won a championship. We have brought the championship to uh yeah, it was in Bullhead, granted. Right. But let's let's face it, it was kinda like a, a home game for us. Right. And when we start to see the amount of people that could and should be watching this, I mean, the the part that blew me away was when I saw the numbers from caffeine and, and YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. talking, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of eight hundred and fifty thousand. So, and I had literally, I had people that I'm friends with, but you know, those, those kind of fair weather friends, they yeah. only, they, they only come see you when they, when they right. want something right. or need something. Right. Yeah. I had a couple of them call me up and we're like, dude, we knew you were part of a seven. We didn't know this was a seven. Right. right. And they watched that championship game and they were blown away. So, I mean, you know, I, we even played. The championship game, when we did our fantasy draft, we played that championship game. And there was guys that damn near missed their pick because they were watching the game. <laughs> you know, so I, I basically told them, I said, look, in the offseason, when y'all jones them for football, turn on the A7. You're not going to be disappointed. Right. You need to watch A7 football and see what's going on. Right. You know, we got, we got players in the A7 that are what I consider special for um, what they do. I mean, we can. I could run down a list. I mean, some of them are watching us now. Scotty Hamilton, uh, quarterback from the Insomniacs, dude is off the chain, right? Then you got RTC. You got <clears throat> all kinds of players that um, are just incredible players, right. incredible talents. You know, we got another one coming on the coming on the show here in a little bit. Yodi, that's that's a, a damn good player. I mean, these are guys that if they had opportunity to play at other levels could they i think they could and i think that um them being here I, I'm, I'm gonna be selfish i don't want them to go anywhere <laughs> right because they, in my eyes they're what makes the a7fl as good as it is well here's one thing to <clears throat> piggyback off that um we are all fortunate to be working in this league but we're not working in this league without the heartbeat and the heartbeat is the players Mm -hmm. They are the heartbeat of this league. Without question. And without them, you wouldn't be a division manager. Nope. I certainly wouldn't be in the booth commentating with Casey and Scott and wouldn't be hosting this podcast without the heartbeat that is the players. So understand that when you're talking about this league, the heartbeat of this league is the players. And all of us that work in media, work on the behind the scenes, so on and so forth. We are fortunate and allowed to do that because of the heartbeat that is the players that play in this league. There's a reason why Mike Tomlin said, give this league five minutes even before the season started. And it culminated in Bullhead City to give you an understanding of why this league is trending. And as I've said before, don't miss the train because the train is coming. And if you're fortunate to get on again, don't get off this time. Ride it all the way through. Right. And the thing about it is that we're forgetting, too, is all the players and, and uh, teams from back east. You know, when we start to put this all together and we start paying attention to the teams that are have been in the league for years and you've got guys that have played this game for a long time, um, and I'm talking A7, I'm not talking just football in general, A7 specifically, and you got guys that understand this game inside and out. Um, you know, the, three, the guys from the three-on-one podcast, they understand this game like nobody's business. And my hat's off to them because they bring – they bring it, you know, they, they talk about uh, teams and players and they show you the love for a seven FL 
and I didn't think that my love for this game and specifically A7, my love for football is is you know second to none. I mean, double tell you, he was over at the house Sunday. We're, we, <laughs> we watched were. we watched damn near every game. But <laughs> only thing missing was the telestrator. <laughs> yes, but the the big thing about that is when I started to get into this A7, um, it was brought to me because. Derek is like a little brother to me. I love that man to death. Um, better yet, I love him to life. So when I see and he brought this in, I'm like, well, I got to check this out now. And the first time I watched it on YouTube, I'm like, did that just really happen? Right. And I had to, <laughs> I, I got to the point where I continued to watch other games. Right. And I'm like, man, this is some good stuff. I've literally now watched our championship game six times. I got three. I got that. And I, I send it to all my people. Oh, yeah. Like, you doing what? Man, look, pay attention. Yeah. and I Pay attention to this and then call me back and then tell me what you think. Now, and I, I've sent it to <laughs> friends. I'm like, hey, you jones them for some football before the NFL started? Right. They're like, man, you don't even know the half. I'm like, here, watch this. Get a call back. Dude, that was crazy. Yeah. That's a championship game? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Hold yeah, on, Chris. Man. Hold on, Chris. Yes, Corey, he was giving y'all credit and showing y'all love. No, the feed did not mess up. He was actually giving y'all credit. Calm down, Corey. <laughs> love you, Corey Hammond, but no, we were, we were giving you credit for Man. what you guys do because you are, you and Scott McCorkle, without question, are the two hype men of this league. Understand oh, that. Like, if there was a billboard, it would be you and Scotty promoting this league. Just understand that, hands down. Look, um, my boy Corey, dude, love you to death, brother, and no, nothing's going on, nothing's wrong, but we need to have another drinking session and you and I talking sports because I, I do miss that, brother. So I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> All right. Uh, real quickly, Bobby, before we uh, say so long for now, um, just give the... Uh, audience rv millions just you know give them a i guess a promo or just you know just one more time just tell them what you're about with the alienators um basically what it is like i said um i was i, I was captivated i was captivated as soon as i as soon as i started watching and coming out i like these boys is playing real ball at home we call it murder ball and murder ball is just everybody gets you when you get the ball oh yeah you know that's murder ball so i'm like man this is murder ball in the league and so basically what it is with the alienators, I just want to come in and, and, um, and, and put a good team together and participate in this. And um, at the same time, bring a little more promotional light to the game, to the sport, something else, you know, because once you have a, a couple or, or multiple scenarios around one scenario, you get more crowd participation. So you might get people to just – Want to see what aliens look like playing football, <laughs> you know? And again, I want to, on the behalf of the alien races involved, I want to thank Mr. Duncan for allowing us to play in his league in Vegas. Coach so. Bobby Shalise of the <laughs> Las Vegas Alienators, appreciate the time, sir. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very Bobby, much. Man. Thanks, right. brother. Appreciate you, man. All right. So uh, back to self-promoting of this league. So, Chris, tell the viewers what you do for the league. And, yes, what? I'm asking for a reason. You're asking for a reason? Okay. Yes. Well, as the division manager, um, basically oversee the division, uh, all eight teams, make sure that uh, we've got what we need when we need it. Um, God, there's so many different ways I could go with this. Um, rosters, get with the coaches on their first uh, complaint, on their their first spot that they're coming to when so there's you're the, problems. So, so you're the uh, quote-unquote Demora Smith, for lack of a better term. Man, I'm a gopher. Got I it. go for this, I go for that. Got it. Well, again, we have talked at nauseum about how great the championship game was that took place in Bullhead City on July the 23rd. But again, because, you know, this is our motivating, uh, promoting stick for this league. But again, if you have a niche for football, and if watching football in pads does not do it for you, then you go to Caffeine TV. Did you say pants or pads? Pads. P A D S. It sounded like he said pants. I did not say Quan, pants. I did, did not say didn't pants. It sound like it sounded like he said pants, didn't he? That's what it sounded like. But. Thank you. Okay. No. Thank you. So I'm not I'm not If you have problem watching football players wearing pads <laughs> and helmets. <laughs> and pants. And pa they do wear pants too. Um but if you want to watch some captivating, thrilling, any Emotion that you have watching a football game, go to the A7FL TV page on YouTube or A7FL.TV or Caffeine and rewatch The Insomniacs and Nightcrawlers. And of course, there's also a documentary about The Insomniacs coming real soon that you can catch on Tubi. So, again, if you want to have some excitement in your life, go watch the championship game. You've heard Chris Ferris said it, he's watched it, 
six times. Yeah, I've watched the sec- I've watched the second half alone that amount of times just because the second half was some of the most captivating football I've seen oh, so in person. Fun. So much fun. Oh, by the way, Damari, oh, hopefully I'm saying that right. You can't say that, dude. They can't call it that no more. You see what I'm saying, Dub? What happened? Look at what uh, Damari, because they were talking about <laughs> killer ball. Smear the you know what? Oh, <laughs> can't yeah. Say that no can't more. say that no can't more. Can't say that no more, man. Back in elementary, yes, we yes, could. Yes, we could. You know I what? I mean, back when I was, hell, even when I was in my 20s, we could say that. Nowadays, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's a good way to get the uh, yeah. some people after. Yeah, you, that's you, all yeah, I'm going to say. You don't, you don't want that to happen. Nah. But uh, no. as we're just saying, please just watch the game, watch the game, watch the game, watch the game. Watch the game one more time. Or five more times. Whichever, you know, whichever, you know, whichever makes you happy. Or in my case, I'll probably watch it about seven or eight more times. Just saying. We definitely need to get a Madden Telestrator, for sure. In, in, in over talk, at the house? Or just, talk, or just, you know, breaking down that game as, you know, Scotty has been wanting to do it for so long, watching the game. Again, if you want to call in, we do have a number, 702-608-3259. If you want to call in and ask some questions or give your thoughts on this upcoming fall brawl season, please do so. As Quan yes, is people eating are a nice, soft now. As Quan is eating a nice juicy chicken sandwich. Right. Well, at least it's not pizza with pineapple. That is correct. Just saying. But uh, I ain't going there. Quan, <laughs> Quan, we're not friends. I'm not going to say nothing about uh, that. Oh, here, here, here we go. Back to that pizza. No, thing. I'm not. I'm going to leave the pizza with with the pineapple alone. That's Quan's thing. He could do that. I'm not one to do that. I can't put pineapple on my pizza. Greetings, Just Sister saying. Wilkerson. How are you, sir? But uh, we do have another guest in the studio. Um, he has taken his talents from OTT to the Outlaws, but he is as intense as there anybody is. is on the there field. Go, man. Uh, one of the Dude. most intense dudes, but a fantastic player, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Yodi Mack is in the house. How are you, sir? Good, man. How y'all doing in here? Thank you for having me. You on. good? We're Appreciate good. Yes, so sir. I guess. Good. good. So, so I guess question number one would be. Um, why the switch and what led to the switch? Um, so um, people play the game for different reasons. You mm-hmm. understand? So Correct. like um, I just came to a conclusion that the goals that I had set for myself and the admiration that I have about the game didn't meet the same levels as OTT. You know what I mean? I'm not going to speak on nothing bad about them guys. You know, it was a great group of guys. And that they let me showcase my talents in a way that I wanted to. And it got, I feel like it got my name on the map, so to speak. And um, so shout out to them, man. It's just, we didn't see eye to eye as far as like future goals and stuff like that. So I just had to take my talents to a new squad. What you got, Chris? I can respect that. Okay. I mean, let's face it, you know, free agents in the NFL, what do they do? You know, they go to another team. But I like the fact in my eyes, you go into another team because you feel like you have better opportunity. Mm-hmm. Whereas how many times have we heard free agents say, I'm going to another team because I want to win, and then they go to a sorry-ass team because they want money. You know what I mean? Man. So, you know, that's just being real. Mm-hmm. And it's like you want after – I'm just going to say this, man, like, after the Insomniac game, bro, it left, like, a real stain on me. And it's just, like, when you sit back and you look at it, you like, how good could you perform when you got your cast around you all right, everybody thinking the same, moving the same. When it's not like that, it's, like, it caps your potential as well. So you like, could I win with this group? It's not even about winning. It's just more like, like, who really hungry? Who really ready to compete? You know what I mean? Like, you get a good group of guys, and it don't matter who on the field. You know what I mean? It don't matter what name on the field, who who got the jersey on. If you got the right group of guys around you, you ready to go to war with anybody. I'll tell you what, man. I, being around this game for as long as I have, and there's a lot of you young men that I'm, you know, I hate to say this, old enough to be your dad. Stop yeah, it. That that does bother stop me. Stop it. But being serious. I understand, Jody, how old but stop are you? it. 28. Again, I'm old enough to be his pops. Oh, good Lord. I got a 22-year-old daughter. I, I know this. So <laughs> the thing, yeah, that's right. You met her on Sunday. But anyway, um, what the point that I'm trying to make is the fact that 
I've been a coach, a player coach, the whole nine. So I get what you're saying. <clears throat> but I also get the fact that sometimes you have to keep a core together to grow. Mm -hmm. And if you continuously switch teams, that core is never the same. Mm -hmm. And you don't get a chance to grow. Um, I've had what people would call, um, you know, teams that should, should win it all. No cohesion, mm -hmm. you know? And then I had teams that everybody was like, what the hell are y'all doing with that team? <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Yeah. And we've won championships. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is correct. You know, if you've got somebody that is as hungry as you are, that's got the same jersey on as you do, and it really matters in my eyes, what really matters in this game is that brotherhood that we talk about. I said this is a fraternity. And people have to understand if you are an outsider of football and you're just a fan and you've never played, mm -hmm. the fraternity is only as strong as we can make it per team. Mm -hmm. And to, to draw that down just a little bit more, if you want to be on a winning team, sometimes you have to play together for years to get to that. Mm -hmm. um, other times people try to make that, you know, um, super teams as they call them. I've never been one for that. I, I'm old school that way. Mm. So, like, I'm, you could equate me to Magic and, you know, for the Lakers. I'm not going to a good team. Screw that. Mm. I want to put my team together to beat that good team. No, you definitely. You know, you go play on your team. Mm. I got my team. We going heads up, and we're going to see who wants it more. We'll see no, you in June. That's, that was my whole thing. That was the way I, I looked at things. Mm. I never wanted to go play for another team, another squad, because it was always in my eyes, oh, you guys think you're better. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. No, definitely, definitely. Just so that way you understand. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of get where you're coming from, but at the same time, my thoughts on things are a little bit different mm -hmm. because my whole thing was always, I'm going to put a team together and we're going to go out there and play and we're going to show what you know coaching can do and what practice can do. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I'm not downing you, man. You got to go do your thing. No, definitely. Like you said, though, coaching and practice play a, a, a pivotal role in being successful as a team. It does. You know what I mean? And Practice back, like you play. Bro, and then back to the fraternity thing you said, so brotherhood, too. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is that me and my boy Tom, Anthony Smith, mm -hmm. we played Little League together. I was content with hanging up my cleats. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even want to play no more. Like, it was just the passion was always there. but. It was more so like, I'm content with leaving the game. You know, I left the game injury-free, played for a good high school senior. Shout out to Kane Springs and Coach Coop, Hunky Cooper, you know what I mean? Played with a good cast. And after my senior year, I was good. But my boy Tone brought me back out. He like, bro, like, I, I know you still want to play. Like, I see it in you. I know you could do it. Like, come out, bro, and play with me. I'm like, all right, cool. And we was on the pit bosses together. Then after that, that's when, like, our pit boss team got dismantled, so you know everybody went their ways. But now we're trying to bring the brother, the brotherhood back together. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with that. So obviously, <clears throat> new team, new teammates, and obviously preparing for a training camp. So for you personally, what are you looking to enhance from last season to bring to the fall? Um, so I've been watching film on me all season, last season, mm -hmm. and. Uh, one thing that I didn't like about myself was I came in kind of heavy. I was 230 last season. And uh, this season I'm trying to come in like 205. And uh, really my speed, speed is an aspect. <clears throat> um, whatever position I'm playing, we got to uh, get the specifics down to the position and work on that. You What's know your what natural mean? position? Man, so it's so many. But I'm going in this next season playing QB. Okay. You know what I mean? And well, I mean, you do have the arm for it because you did throw some dimes this past season. Oh, so you, yeah, man. you, you it, definitely have the arm strength for it, for sure. It's just the fact that it was all, like, rushed. You know what I mean? It was never really, like, got the time to critique and work at it. That's why I'm, I'm working every day, grinding, you know what I mean, to embrace the skill set that I already have. You know what I mean? I see I talk about the arm. It's big, but... What I see is I see a strong arm that could use a lot more accuracy. You know what I mean? So I'm working on that. It's always the little things, you know? 
that's how you get big wins. You stack your small wins. Well, accuracy comes with footwork. So hopefully you're working on that. I definitely. Um, seeing too many quarterbacks in this league and other leagues that the happy um, feet not not just the happy feet but also uh they get their feet too far apart and so it doesn't allow you a natural throwing motion and hopefully you know how to throw with your hips rather than just your arm yes, sir. um that's one thing that actually funny enough uh one of your teammates uh trey who i like to call my son the uh, son of krypton yes because of his superman and number two because i wore number two okay but um, the bigger thing about that is learning to throw with your body helps your arm. So that way your arm and your shoulders don't wind up hurting as you go through a season or even a game. It's funny you mention that because <clears throat> I know he gets flacked a lot, but actually Joe Namath had some of the best mechanics in throwing a football. If you really watch film on him. Oh, I have. Uh, well, I'm just saying how you talk yeah. about the, whole, the, the movement with the hips and whatnot. Perfect analogy. Joe's problem with, with most of his throws were his knees. Yeah. He wasn't allowed, he wasn't able to drive the ball like he'd like to with his body because his knees were so bad. But it is part of it. So if you understand how to, um, you know, they, they make fun of Dak with the Dak dance. Mm -hmm. That's basically him working on throwing with his hips. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, even on the run, you'd be surprised how much more power you could get into a throw by doing that. I mean, I've, I've done it for years, but that was also, uh, I wish I could sit here and tell you, oh, it was because of baseball. It wasn't. I hated baseball. I loved watching it, hated playing it. But um, the reason why I learned about that was um, throwing rocks, believe it or not. Mm. That's how I learned. And it also, by doing that, it also improved my accuracy at throwing a rock sidearm. Mm. But I could also throw um, third base, from third base to first base, I could throw it sidearm with no problem. Mm. Okay. Just learning to, to use your body. Mm -hmm. So young quarterbacks, and you know, I, I, talked to, I talked to Trey at one of our, I can't remember if it was one of the combines or something, we were talking about it, and I said, your, your arm looks like it's you know, bothering you a little bit. He goes, yeah, it's a little sore. I said, well, you're throwing straight arm, aren't you? And he said, yeah, and I showed him how to, how to throw with his hips, and he's been doing it ever since. But it's one of those things that once you learn, I'm telling you, your accuracy is better, your deep ball is better, and you'll gain 10, maybe 15 yards. I don't know how much. Um, Trey had told me how much he gained on it, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I remember, but these are all little aspects of playing football, the little aspects that you have to do. And what you're saying about practice is meaningful because, you know, there's some teams that don't need to practice and they, they play together and flag. They know each other, you know, like the back of their hands. But then you've got teams that need that practice because you need that one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. You need to understand – where your wide receivers like the ball, you need to understand how they run their routes uh, to get open. And, you know, running a route is uh, a very specific thing. And, I mean, guys just try to do it with speed. Can't always do it with speed. Technique is the best way. Yeah, I mean, you got to understand when a, when a corner's playing you, shading you to the inside, but you want that inside. How do you get him to jump to the outside? And that was one of my favorite things when I played. I played wide receiver, and I loved watching the corners mm -hmm. and seeing how they would play me and guys that would jam me. I had so much fun with them, so much fun with wow. them. So I'm glad that you guys are practicing. I'm glad that you're out there doing your thing. Uh, playing quarterback should be interesting, and I know that you'll be able to run the ball, which is going to make a difference. So uh, I can't wait to, uh, to get to this, this fall season. So obviously you guys are getting ready for the fall. Mm -hmm. um, Outside of yourself, is there anybody in the Outlaws camp that is making some noise that we should perhaps pay attention to for the upcoming fall season? Not to, you know, give anything away, per se. No, I like, I'm going to just say this, man. Stay tuned. You know what I mean? We Smart like man. To, we don't want to show our hand or show what places we got or what, what, what we got going on, our schemes and nothing like that. We just going, when it's time to play, we're going to be ready. That's so, what I'm gonna say. So now that you have changed teams for the fall, mm -hmm. does that make you officially a free agent for the spring in 2024? No, I'm an outlaw in the spring as well. Okay. Okay. 
Mm, I don't think so. But that'll go down a different route. You don't think so? No, Legacy's teams are staying. This isn't playing you're in. Mm. So we want. I want to make sure everybody understands that. Teams that are playing in the fall, if you are a new team, you are not playing to get into the spring. Spring teams are staying. Mm. Teams that played last season in the spring are staying. Legacy teams are staying. So mm. the eight teams that are original, uh, okay, they're staying. It isn't playing you're in. Mm. So just so you understand. And I know that that's been confusing, but I have to say that because it has been a talk, and I want to make sure that people that are listening understand that. So the original eight will be in the in the uh, spring. Okay. Okay. Well, that clears up any confusion. Well, shit. stay tuned on that too, then. Okay. Well, there you go. So he is a free agent for the spring. Just FYI. Um. So. Um. What is the one thing that you will bring to the table for the outlaws since you are putting on some new colors? Uh, a lot of heart, a lot of passion, a lot of dedication. I mean, I want, it's not even the fact that you want to win, you know what I mean? I want to compete. I'm hungry. I want to play. We could play right now. You know what I mean? Like, we can line it up, whoever. I'll tell you what, you stay to the end. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw uh, the ball around with you. you know I'm, I'm good with that. I'm here. I'm good with that. It's just, uh, it's, man, the game of football, it's, it's not a game to me. It's a lifestyle. And uh, it made me a better man, just a better person overall. And, man, I'm just hungry, ready to play. You know, I, I, I will say some of the better guys that I know from sales – and understand people that understand teamwork are people that played sports. So even when I'm in my professional side of what I do, so this is my fun side. I love football. I love talking it. I the love being job. around it. Yep, this is my fun job. My real job, being out there in corporate America, dealing with a bunch of uh, people, it's it's different. But I can honestly say I can. You can see the people that have played sports before; mm -hmm. they get it. Mm -hmm. And I'm with you on my weekends when I played. All my frustrations for the week, my family never sucks. I took it out on the field on Sunday, you know. And, and you can literally empty your cup. Mm -hmm. So that's the best part about it. So you don't have to have that that pent up anger, you know, yeah. going into the week. I loved it. Loved it. Now I get to watch y'all play and yell and scream. No, There's my man. love for the game. That's and ho lovely. and hopefully do some sideline reporting during the fall also. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> Since I'm out there anyway, you might as well just throw a <laughs> mic in my hand and let me talk. <laughs> Jeez. Get that man an earpiece. Right? No. So um I'm behind you. Well, I appreciate that, man. So um any well, okay, um final thoughts before we uh say so long for now. Um just what do you want our viewers to know and what are they going to see from Yodi Mac? In the fall, starting December the third. Stay tuned. What you gonna get from me is uh, man, just a whole lot of passion for the game. I ain't gonna say what I'm gonna do. I just like to do it. I don't really like to talk about it. You know what I mean? I'm just ready to play. Um, I'm gonna be rocking number ten in this upcoming fall season. Mm. You know, and didn't Marsh Charlie Bash wear number ten? You know. He did, but also Marshawn Lynch wore that when he went to Cal Berkeley. You know, ten toes down. You know, ten reasons why. Yep. You know what I mean? And uh, hopefully I give y'all boys a show, all the viewers a show who tuned in to watch us in the fall. You know what I mean? <laughs> there he is. What? In case you're wondering, that's why we said it. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Charlie. Uh, we already said hello. You're here. No. Okay. Yes, I but, am. But, Yodi, all I can say, man, put the hair up so that way nobody's grabbing you by it when oh, you're running. No, nah, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, I haven't got it pulled yet, so I try to keep it like in a nice. Yeah, but you weren't too. playing. You weren't playing offense, man. No, now you right. are. No, now yeah, you are. You're right, but at the end of the day, though, you know, it's a, um, it's a real respect, man. If you got to pull my hair to get me down, I understand. You know what I mean? It, it'd be because like you that. know they're trying to catch you from behind. You, you know what I mean? Feel me? So it'd be like that. So. Yeah, but yeah. I like I love it because you know my background. I'm West Indian. So, mm -hmm. you know, I got a lot of cousins and, and whatnot that still live down in the West Indies. Mm -hmm. You know, they talking about being a Rasta and having their, their hair, yeah, you know. You know I mean? So I feel you, man. I like it's it. A, I like a, it. It's a peaceful journey. But what a lot of people don't understand is that long hair come back from the time of Warriors. 
like the toughest the toughest people in the world the strongest people the real warriors back in ancient times all wore long hair that was like your significant strength well i'll tell you what i wear short hair because i can't stand hair but no, anyway i understand that <laughs> well mine's just left me so i have no choice but to rock the bald look <laughs> and be a shiny cue ball that's all right man we love you the way you right. are god bless you buy you some head shine later <laughs> no nope. <Not> me. <laughs> if mills was watching you're gonna get a reference don't 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 encourage him oh okay my bad. <laughs> my bad. anyhow yoni mac in the house going repping the outlaws in the fall we appreciate the time sir thank you yes, sir, man. Man. appreciate y'all man thank great you great to have you on. on good luck you know what i mean stay tuned baby 10 toes down well, he has definitely uh, got some motivation and definitely is playing with, he's definitely playing with something to prove. He's got a chip on his shoulder. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Not at all. I mean, I, I think I played my whole, the whole time that I played with a chip on my shoulder. I was told that I can't do this or I can't do that. My thing was just wait for it. I'll show you. Um, first off, I'm glad to see Nick Blaze back in the building. <laughs> What's up, Nick? <laughs> my boy's back. He just dancing around like he like we could see him. Yeah. Camera ain't on, man. Camera ain't on. You got you gotta wait. You gotta wait, bro. You gotta wait. You wanna yeah, there, there, there you go. There right you there. Go. Right there. There you go. That's my producer, there man. There you go. It's my producer. Amazing show. He's he's the producer, so would you call him the puffy combs since he's he's dancing into our video? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a, a reference, yes, it would yeah. be. Yeah. But anyhow, um the champ is in the building. We, we, we do have the champs in the building, um, of course, from your national champions, the Las Vegas Insomniacs. Marcus is in the building. Marcus. 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 I always got to hear that. I know that. Yeah, <laughs> wearing the sunglasses, too, because yeah, yeah. obviously he's used to hearing that, so we all know what goes behind that. Can you, you make it just he, a little darker? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, got, yeah. he's got the ray bands on Marcus yeah, Burton yeah. Sorry, from sorry, the man. Insomniacs in the building. How are you, sir? I'm all right. I'm all right. Appreciate y'all having me. So... Two months have passed. Has it sunk it in yet that you guys are champions? No, no, I don't think it has. I don't hmm. think it has. We haven't even had our celebrations and stuff. We still really to, get to that. Yeah, I don't know what's <laughs> going on. But uh, no, we haven't had it. James, in. Not nasty. <laughs> James, oh, J- James is James is doing all right. I can we can we show. can we have a uh, conversation about uh, having a party for these guys, man? Come on, you won the national championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's mostly the guys and stuff, but that's how much we. I think I don't know if we just so much expect it or we just uh, we ready for the next. A little bit of both. We're not even worried about the party like that. We celebrated it for those couple of days and stuff. We enjoyed it, but it's like. You know, it's it, it's 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 kind of weird to me when you say that. Only for this this you know when when you hear an NFL coach talk about a win, okay. We well, enjoy today and get back exactly. to tomorrow. Yeah, come Monday, come Tuesday, whenever that game out was, come Friday, out it's the out the door. door. We got it. We got you. Got twenty four hours. Yeah. But a championship is kind of like a, a a Super Bowl, right? Yeah. You guys are the champs until the next season is over, and it's not the fall season. In this case. Yeah. So you guys are champs for a full year and then some, but yet you guys haven't celebrated that championship? No, man. I'm no, man. I think what it is is that we really expected it. When my boys brought me on, we, we'll get into some of the outlaw stuff later, too. I don't know if y'all want to get into that. Hey, hey it, whatever you want, you, man. You, you whatever have, you want. You, how we, you are our guest. This, use yeah, the platform, so this, brother. We're going to clear all this up right now. Okay. And so how we came into this, a bunch of flag guys. Everybody like it's an all-star team. No. Neither one of our flag teams even won championship. We have, but we ain't in best team in flag. So it's a bunch of guys that want to – and this is why it's going to be personal with certain people. We okay. love those guys. And everybody, we love everybody we play flag with. We support that. We came together because some I'm I don't know I think I'm the only one that really played semi pro in pads, mm-hmm. but guys that got into the AFC A seven NFL first like yeah you guys don't play tackle you don't play tackle, but my boys and stuff like uh, Munchie Scott James Dyson like dude we could do the same stuff too we got coaches we got players that could do this, literally put it together to go out there and play a couple games have fun, literally beat like. Trey and the defending champions and whoever that was in Vegas, literally, that's all it was, just to have fun. It was never to a goal to win a national championship at first. Then when we seen how it was scoped out, seen the roster we could put together, 
And they was like, oh, we knew this go. We can go national championship. It was that confident from the beginning. And that's where, like, the personal stuff is going to come in with the outlaws. That we came in, like, just to beat some of you guys that was already talking all this stuff. Then we joined forces to do things for Vegas and make Vegas big. Because even mm -hmm. on a national level, they don't give Vegas a lot of credit for the stuff that we do here. They don't understand we're getting big-time recruits out of here from high school, basketball, football, and everything. They compare us to whole states. It's like, oh, yeah, Jersey versus Vegas. Florida versus Vegas. Texas versus little old Vegas. So we did it, and we came together for that. And when we did it, we had, like, two teams on the radar. We was like, ah, we might have to worry about them if they come out. We really came out knowing what we was going to do. We didn't expect, and we expected nothing less. It's just the truth about it, seriously. Oh, we have a caller. Oh, yeah. It's only, man. Uh -oh. Caller, how are you? What's up? What's up, man? It's Pat. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh oh. Mr. Pack, what's going on, brother? <laughs> it's who? Pack. Man, why y'all bringing these dudes on here that don't finish the season? You said that don't what? Don't be finished the season. Marcus could be on the beach and some hoochie down. Y'all need to talk to him. He's saying I didn't finish the season. So a couple games in. This this how serious. I'm on. He's gonna go to the beach. No, yeah, I do go to the beach. This I just finished my third surgery. If you look at the player, I forgot what team he's playing. <laughs> broke my face. Yep. Mm -hmm. Headbutt. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I remember that. Cut the head. Hey, it don't even face. look like you your shit. Oh up, yeah, bro. you know I'm, I'm three surgeries in. A couple fillers, plates as of like uh, August 6th, You know, a little Kim Kardashian <laughs> surgery. <I'm back. laughs> a little black eye and everything. You, I got, you I got boy, good doctors. I, I believe. Yeah, you know, I'm right back. So yeah, that's why I got the glass. No, I just got the glasses on because they look good. But yeah, seriously though, hey, man, I'm, 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 I'm barely a month out. You, bro. Hey, I appreciate it, Pac. But Pac's a guy who plays semi pro. With me, so I respect guys that play semi pro and stuff and know how we do and stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here right now. You know, y'all didn't quit on us. No, no, I'm waiting on you to bring me back. You know, I'm ready. I got my face mask ready. I'm going back. I can't retire yet. I hope my lady don't see this. Well, <laughs> well see, see, <laughs> see? you work, like me. Bro. You like me. You know, hey, we we talk that we talk hella shit until yeah. our ladies yeah. get involved yeah. in there. It's like, oh, honey, I was just kidding. Listen, even on the championship <laughs> game, I told her I was hey. coming. And then she didn't know I was coming back. I'm like, yeah, Chris, I'm uh, Chris, receiver coach. Yeah, look, Pac, we're going to yeah. talk. I've been in the groups talking to y'all. Y'all ain't got back to me. No, nah, Pac, Pac hit me up uh, today, and he's like, hey, I need you out at practice tomorrow. And I said, what's up? He said that um, he needs some help with the receivers. So I said, yeah, I got you, man. Yeah, yeah. I got man. you. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. You know, I play a little Hey, you know who else we got, Coach? Who? We got Coach Ray from the Hunters, bro. See, I need in. I need in. I need in. I'm ready. Inside information as we are going right. live on this. Yeah, we so, so. trying to keep this A7 shit together, bro, even outside of A7. No, yeah. man, this is this is family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is family. It don't matter It don't matter who you play for. It don't matter what's going on bingo, in the be bingo. behind the scenes or whatever. Man, we always going to stand up and, and protect and help each other out. So, yeah, yeah, man. you I, know, I, I, D, I, I already told you I got you. So whenever you needed me, I'm glad you reached out. Man, I appreciate you 100%. Man. Oh, yeah, man. I got you, and even, even when this happened, man, I got a lot of love and support from everybody from A7FL. People I didn't know. I met new people. Mm -hmm. Asked me what I needed. Sending me money and stuff like that. My insurance took care of it. It was a real, real good thing. That's why I say I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. People did. They did a good job, and I was happy with how things went. Man, A7, look, the thing about it is <clears throat> I talk about it, but I had to prove it. You know, when, when we... When Derek called me up and he was talking about this, and I, I, I kind of want everybody to understand this, um, I met Derek playing football when he was 19. We've been friends for going on 28 years. When he brought me into this, my thing and my only thing was I had to make everybody understand because he wanted me to coach. And I said, no, I can't. I, you either got me as um, a representative of the division and working in the division, or you have me as a coach, you can't do both. Because right. everybody sees that as, you know, a conflict of interest. And I don't want to be called out where people think that I'm trying to do something. So my whole point on this was to get to know all you guys, all the players. I wanted to understand y'all, and I wanted y'all to understand the fact that I'm here for you. This isn't me being greedy about my time this is about me being here for the players because realistically <clears throat> what other channels do you have look i love kelly to death but she's got so much on her shoulders that if you need something it has to start with me 
and I want to make sure that I'm there for y'all. So I got guys hitting me up all the time for different reasons, and I appreciate that. And so when you were hurt, you know, one of the things I wanted to make sure of was that you were okay. And you kept checking on me. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always going to do that. I'm still checking on Vince, man. Vince is my boy. You know, have we had yeah, our yeah, arguments? Yeah. Have we had our, yeah. our times? Hell yeah. But it don't matter. This man was in a car accident that could have taken his life. Yeah. And that all the other all the other BS means absolutely nothing to me. What means the most to me is that that brother's okay. And so I check up on him all the time. And the fact of the matter is, man, some of you guys are, are young enough where, like I've already said to Yodi, I said, you, you young enough to be my son. And others, you're up there, you know, nobody's up at 52. Um, <laughs> but we got guys that, you know, Tyrone was is in his 50s, and he understands where I'm coming from. I want to make sure that you guys have your opportunities. I want to make sure that you guys understand what your worth is to the A7. And I want to make sure that the coaches and players understand we're here for you, you know? Really and sure. how much I appreciated y'all for our uh, – I shouldn't say appreciated – how much I wanted y'all to win the championship would 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 right now be an understatement for the ass kicking I took on RTU oh, with all go. the dudes from go. all the from back east. It did me justice to watch y'all win the championship. And all I will say is, since then I've been on RT, RTU's uh, podcast again, and I'll tell the guys the same thing. I'll tell any of you. I'm here for you. First off, uh, Danny Packer, we appreciate the phone call. Um, Blaze, you have a request. Somebody wants to come on the show. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Voodoo Reek wants to come on the show. Who? So, Tyreek. Oh, Tyreek wants yeah, to come on. He wants okay. to come on the show. So, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, Marcus, take me back to the championship game and, and give me the championship game from your perspective, from your eyes. Take me back to July 23rd. So, um, championship game, man. Um, I'm literally uh I'm uh I'm coming back off injury, so I had to be a vocal leader the last couple games in Cincinnati and everything. And uh I seen exactly what I thought our problem was gonna be. It wasn't physicality, tackling. We have no problem delivering hits, we have no problem we have problem finishing the play. So I knew that was gonna be an issue. And then I, I knew also uh they were coming with athletes. I'm talking we got guys, we got three, four guys running four fours, but when they got guys two sixty, two seventy running four four. Yeah. That's we're smaller. I'm like, Jesus. That changes the game. Yeah, for that sure. changes the game, man. <laughs> I got out there if you first first play I'm out there, second play, I'm like, guy runs a wheel route and I had to really run. He two fifty. I didn't expect that. My boy Chris McWilliams told me, Yeah, hey, you gotta run. I'm like, Yeah, yeah. Try to get a press on him. He ran wheel, so I didn't get a touch on him. And it, he was running fifty six yards downfield that if they were through the ball to him, it was over. So, yeah, even that, and then, like, me guarding, um, what's his name? Caught, like, three touchdowns and shit went crazy. Well, um, Logo Davis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then had the nerve to shake my hand after he caught a ball with the same ball he caught, his hand, caught it with. And I was like, yeah, this is disrespectful. <laughs> you know? I'm talking a lot of shit per usual. But yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, but uh, just straight athlete. Straight athlete. Doesn't, not that fast, but great jumper. Um, knew how to play the game and everything. But we went in knowing these things. I said this. We haven't taken a punch all day. Everybody has a plan so they get hit. Correct. After we get hit, we got to respond. Correct. So we have to be able to respond to the adversity and everything. We can't fall apart being from different teams. And everybody, we being together at the moment but not being together overall on daily basis, we got to hold this together and see how we're going to do it. So when we got down halftime, man. It was like me. Uh, yeah, we call it the tequila crew because um, might have took a couple shots at half or something. <laughs> tequila Q, you know, Q Some more inside me. information. <laughs> me, hey, 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 you're supposed Birds. to keep that. You're supposed to keep that under wraps, man. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to keep secret. that under wraps. That's the secret. So me, Q, Birds, Chris, AJ, we weren't even we weren't even down yelling and stuff. We said the same way they got up, we got to come back. Somebody has to make a play. That's who understand. Football's a game momentum, game of plays. Make one a play. Pl one play one can play change play it. You one play away. If you hear me on the sidelines, you see me talking to the crowd. If you was there, you seen how active I am in there. Because oh, yeah. you yeah. always one play yeah. away. One play away from changing things. And, that, and that's literally how it went. But me and Q sat there and talked like five minutes doing nothing. Just like, hey, relax. Somebody make a play. Don't worry about the next person's job. Do your job. Make a play. So we went in there with the game plan of uh, we're going to see how it go. We're going to be physical. We're going to. Do these things. We know they're going to make some plays. We know they're going to make big plays. Let's stay together. 
we know in the long run we're deep. We're deep at defensive line. We're deep at linebacker. We're deep at DBs. We're deep at receiver. You see how many people score. We're deep at quarterback if we need to be. Running back. Whatever we need, we got one of the best You can plug backs. somebody yeah. in at any time. Even if RTC goes down, people don't understand how good Joey's going to step in. Trey could step in. Trey made a couple plays for us. He was a little hurt too, but they understand where we're going to keep plugging people in at. So we said we're going to wear them down. They can't do this. We can't play a perfect – they played a perfect half. Let's see if you can do a second half. I doubt you're going to be able to do it. So we're going to play our game, or leave what we want to give you, and force you to make a play, be in a defensive strategy. We know we can't stop everything, but we're going to force you to do what we want to do. We're not going to run, let you run to a certain side. We're going to take away certain things and force you to do what we want you to do and be comfortable with it. If you beat us like that, we're happy. And, and what happened? And it, that's it. Make a play. Damn, let me and tell you. Then, then Q became him. Yes. And it was Q, of Corey Q, Hammond. Him, him was, was going <laughs> off. Him Q, was yeah. Q. <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's what it is. Q being a veteran guy, just loving football, man. I've been, man, and all that Q plays, I'm going to say this about my guy. I met Q playing football. Then I've been, my birthday's tomorrow. It's crazy. Two year anniversary. Well, happy, ever, happy early birthday. Oh, yeah, yeah, happy early birthday, man. Q, I went to Detroit two years ago to see where Q grew up and at, and on Joy Road, Cody High School, a story you hear rappers talk about Cody High, and oh, where yeah. Q's from, and they treat him like a legend in football, and you see the way he plays, the way he plays. He <laughs> loved the game. He's a legend out there. I'm talking about when he pulls up in Detroit in his city, and there's 20 dudes meeting him at his, his mama's house, and they oh, got wow. everything ready and rolling out the red carpet for his wedding. You see, all this came from football. He one of the dudes that made it out and doing something good, and so they love him. So you see why he still loves it. Then he has a son playing. So he's playing for that too. And yeah, man, I seen, yeah, I seen, seen his, his son, son playing on, yeah. on Facebook, and of course, and of course he's and coaching. Now he's coaching. Yeah. yeah, and he turned the program around that was down. So you see where that energy, and he's leading yeah. not only with his voice, but he's leading by example and showing you the passion he play with. That's somebody that loves the game. That's our whole team. Even if we lack in talent, oh, we lack the passion. Guys out there, they don't know the passion it yeah. takes to play three, four games in Vegas heat, 120 degrees. I and, tried and on, like this. and on turf for that matter. Yes. Yeah, and when when it's 120 that. outside and, and 200 degrees on that damn field. <laughs> but I'll tell you, man, I I watched, I watched you guys, and I want to tell you from a different standpoint. Yes, sir. And the reason why I'm saying from a different standpoint because. When we went to Cincinnati and I watched y'all play, I, I get what you're saying. You know, the heart that the Insomniacs played with is second to none. I mean, it's, it's cool when you got a team that ain't that great that plays with heart, but when you got a team as good and as deep as you guys are and you play with that heart, you know, because let's face it, we, we've seen we've seen NFL teams that are deep, deep. and have no heart, mm-hmm. and we've seen them fold, or as you say, make business decisions. Yes, business. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, look, I could I could point to different players on your yeah. squad. I could point to different players that play in this league. Yeah, that when you guys come, I know it's going to be with full heart, and you guys are playing sixty minutes. Yes, sir. This is no. We play in the first half, we'll see what happens. The second half, no, this is, we are playing every minute of the damn game and you guys either play up to us or we gonna beat you. And while I do appreciate and respect the hell out of um, the Nightcrawlers, my point of what I'm saying is what I would say the difference between the two game or between the two teams was, was the fact that you guys are like, you ain't beating us. Yeah, we got that heart. You are not be. Yeah, we're down by twelve, and when they were getting ready to go in for that eighteen, and Q was like, "Not today." Yeah, yeah. And I and double tell you, he was on the sidelines with me. I was sitting down. I was like, "Man, if we, they go in and score right now, man, I don't know what I'm gonna." And all of a sudden, I saw white gloves go up, and I said, "Well, we who the hell the is that?" We ran on the field, and I'm like, "We gotta make a play, Q." Yeah. And when so he came my way, I made the tackle. Q, and Q caught the pitch, we made a play. Yeah. And we, we this thing, we said it was going to happen like that. We're like, we're going to make a play. Yeah. And we're going to change this game. It was about five of us sitting around. Just like, hey, we're going to make a play. And, the, and we're going to and... change this game. And it was that, and that literally, we we didn't feel down. We didn't do nothing. Nah. We sat there. We knew. And we felt, we like, man, it's us. So, and so we me... had so much support from our Vegas people. That that's never happened before, to be honest. Vegas is split between like we had so much support. I don't think they seen it like that. Shout out to everybody in the flag. Shout out to the other teams out there that gave us support and the love and the energy we needed for real. So let me ask this. 
<clears throat> so when Bagway is playing to the crowd, <laughs> be, <laughs> being the ultimate wrestling heel, yeah. for lack of a better term. Yeah. So like in your in your mindset, like what's your what's your thought process? Oh, when he's doing that, I told him celebrating too early. I said, I, that's the thing. I said, you're going to wear down. You, 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 this, like, that, that fired us up right there. Cause, you know, that's type of antics and stuff I do or somebody else does talking stuff. I'm like, oh, this dude doing too much. Well, we're going to break him. Well, eventually, Himothy became him. him. Himothy became and, him. His <laughs> and, and, and got loose yeah. deep. Absolutely. Yes. And, and that's the thing. Even with them being the athletes, we just knew he can't run like this all day. He's, it's not just 50 yards this way, it's 30 and 20 swerving and, Oh, he can't do this. And then go guard our best? No, this is not going to work. Your son says hi. It's not gonna I saw work that. These guys, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Blaze, you want to say something? Okay. Go ahead, Marcus. Continue. Yeah, yeah. No, that's all. I'm just saying, like, we knew those guys had talent, but we knew they just coming in waves. We coming in waves with different people, and it's going to be tough to fight that off for, for a quarter. Oh, were, were they? Were they? Was he the best player on the field that day? Yes. Did they have even Loco? But you're going to need 10 of them. <laughs> you don't need 10. It ain't even 10 of them on the field. <laughs> well, I mean, he he scored five touchdowns, and it still was not still enough. Wasn't eventually, enough. Ain't at that the sad? end, yeah. when you look at all the stats and you look at all that, like how did this happen? And you don't win. That is well, you crazy. know what? There's there's something to be said when you talk about a team sport, right? And we're talking about football, which is a team sport. You could glorify it with individual players, and we've seen the individual players make impacts. We've seen the Lawrence Taylors in the NFL make impacts. We've seen um, other players make impacts as individual players. So the problem with a logo and a bag way is they are offensive players. Now, were they playing defense? Yes. But I think that that was also part of the problem. And not as a knock to them, but eventually you are going to get tired playing both ways. And I'll be the first to tell you, um, when I thought that uh, Logo had that pick where he went Man. to the sidelines, the scariest part for me is I'm standing in the end zone. I watch him go up, and of course, right right away, I'm like, oh, he can't be picking this. But as soon as he came down, he came down on his head. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And we're talking no pads, no helmet. So the first thing that I was worried about was his health. But you know, to his credit, this got, man bounced up, got back up. And, and was continuing to play. And I, I could tell you from the sidelines and to watch his body go limp when he hit the ground, he was out. Yeah. He was out. I'm going to so, back to RTC again sick. Same yes, thing. Yes. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and you know what? The thing about it is it was, and I, I've said this time and time again with RTC's play and him going in and grabbing his calf at the 12-yard line, knowing that he was cramping up. I watched that play so many times, and I've told so many people, I'm like, dude, you couldn't script this any better. Well, like it was said, impossible. Flat tire and all. He was, and, not, and he was not stopping until he got to the like end zone. Yeah. When you watch our game, and you go through and you rewatch it, and you look at any one thing could have went wrong to where we don't win that game. Yeah. So you it makes you think like when people saying the NFL scripted, no, this is heart and passion football that this is with. So stuff changed. When you look at our game, you can easily say this is, this can't, you can't. This is a script. This is out of movie screen and stuff like yeah. that. And like you said, is it that shows you the athletes like logo going up? I don't know. He's got to be two hundred forty pounds or whatever. <laughs> but just the athlete going up forty inches in the air. And no, but, but, I mean, but, but, it, but, but like I mean, he had a forty inch vert. And he's but coming to down shift like from gear one to gear two with his speed, yes, that's uncanny. No, yeah. the, you, let me I, tell you. I, I, let me I mean, tell that's you. like going from zero to sixty in three seconds. But the thing, the play, the play that will will resonate with me because I play wide receiver. The play that will resonate with me for a long time, and I didn't see it live. Mm-hmm. I saw it when I rewatched the game. Is Donye taking their best <laughs> receiver <laughs> and dog walking him across the field? And, 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 that and will twice. resonate with me because how you. <laughs> As a wide receiver, how you let yourself be pushed across the field is, you know, when we're talking about heart, yeah. that's what I'm saying. As a wide receiver, you got to show some kind of heart, and you didn't in that play. And you don't. And, and this is what I say, too. That's, that's heart. A guy like Donnie who easily go to any other team be number one wide out. Absolutely. Yeah. 
He's Absolutely. Our number, he's number one deep. But he did this week in and week out, no recognition. Him, also our own line, they did it with no recognition all year. Donnie would go games without getting through at. It gets boring. So we got to throw him some screens or something to get him involved and everything. Or have him return. Yeah, have him return kicks <laughs> and stuff. Like, that's it. But he goes, he's locked in. But it's hard. And Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a little bit of credit for Donye on one thing. You guys were playing, and I won't say who you were playing. Mm-hmm. And I walked by him, and he said, "I'm going in for a return." I said, "Do me a favor. Just me being a coach. Do me a favor. Get them because what I saw was their outside coverage would break down and cut in." I said, do me a favor. You want a touchdown on this one? He said, yeah. I said, okay, make them commit. Put your foot in the ground and run around them on the outside. You got the touchdown. And he did. And if you saw the first person, I, I, I will I'll gladly tell you afterwards what team it was and what game it was. You'll see that the first person he came over and gave a high five to was me because I told him, I said, you got this. They can't stop you because of your speed, but you got to make him commit. And the minute he made him commit, he was friggin' gone. Donye is, is easily one of the better returners. Him and, Sa- and uh, Savion Cunningham, dude, those two, those two on the same team would cause so much problems for a three-on-one. Yeah. And, and so again, it goes into what I'm talking about, about waves. You know, oh, yeah. The best returner in. In the game, and so and like that was waves and little adjustments. Even Q being a coach and stuff. Like I said, when we were sitting around chilling, <clears> even like at halftime, I don't really mean like, hey, hey, we're we're in there wilding out, but we sitting back, feet up, me, Q, and whatever, whatever. Not really drinking or whatever. We're chilling, and we just like, hey, I told Q, you got to go DM, you got to go key in DM. We need to make a play. There's no any of that. No sitting talking about your shoulder hurting everything, and we sitting back and I told him. He said, hey, I'm ready. I'm just sitting here. He said, hey, hey, all I need is my chance and everything else. Same thing with Donnie. Donnie was waiting on the moment. He's waiting on anything like that. We got players just it's, – it doesn't matter what it is. So to, for anybody that says they're going to come try to beat us, it's going to take a lot. It's yep. going to take a whole lot. Last thing before we say so long for now, um, just give us your last statement. At, or first of all, are you playing in the fall? Was, are, you, are you playing in the fall? I'm still iffy on the fall. I got to get my um, Zorro mask I'm going to be playing with <laughs> and everything. And I got to hide out from my girl to see if we'll make it spring. I might make my appearances here and there when okay. I'm worried about spring. Yeah, yeah, okay. So. Well, okay. As it comes to spring, y'all being the defending champions, yes, sir. you know you're going to get everybody's best shot and everybody's best test. So what do you say to that? I, I think it's only going to make us better. We went games in, games out where we're asleep on the sidelines, where we're, we're, we're taking it serious, and then we get up within the first four minutes and we don't care anymore. We're not even – the preparation slows down and stuff. You get content. You get, you get stagnant about doing things. And we went through weeks of that. So to actually have to go to the championship is the first time where we're getting hit in the mouth and got to respond to a punch and to be able to do that. I don't think it's nothing going to stop us. And you know how it is with champs. It's just like Colorado and Dion riding right now. Everybody want to come. I'm telling you. We got everybody want to come. So yeah, we just replace the stuff and keep coming. I ain't going to lie. Gonna I, jumped, I jumped on that bandwagon. <laughs> <gonna be> <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> hey, I'm telling them, hey, they're going to they jump on the bandwagon. They're going to be getting pulled by the bandwagon. One there you go. <laughs> From your national champions of the A7 Philly and Somniacs, Mr. Marcus, darling. <laughs> Marcus, darling. Marcus appreciate Burton. You, appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Thanks, champ. Appreciate you coming out. All right. So, as you heard Chris Vera says what he does for this league, if you want to be a division manager like him, if you want to be a championship owner like Derek Duncan, or if you want to be an owner slash producer slash many hats that he wears like Nick Blaze, or if you want to cover this league in the media like yours truly and our friends at the 3 one podcast, or if you want to be part of the heartbeat and you want to play, go to a7fl.com or whatever region that you're in and whatever outlet you want to participate in, it will give you all the information that you need, and then you can make your decision from there. If you want to, if you want to understand why this league is stringing, if you want to, want to understand why Mike Tomlin said give this league five minutes, go to a7fl.com and click on the outlet that you want to be a part of. As we've said before, the train is moving, and you might want to get on. Our fall season starts on December the 3rd, and then in March we celebrate the 10th anniversary 
of this league. This league has made it to its 10th years. season, wow. which is hard to believe. But in its 10th season, the crown will be defended from out of the West Coast in Las Vegas, Nevada, in its third season in this league. So things can happen. Heads are starting to roll. But if you want to be a part of this league and understand why people are so passionate about this league, go to acinefl.com and click and see how you can become a part of this league. It's always fun, man. Always fun. I'll tell you what. I am looking forward to fall season, um, mainly because I think that there is going to be some uh, new blood out there. I think that we're going to see some new teams that are very interesting. I think that, um, you know, as we pull, because, I mean, let's face it, one of the biggest things for A7FL, we've got guys that are older. I'm not going to say old because they're not, but we got older players and we got some young players. I think that the talent that we bring in, the people that we bring in and take this league um, seriously, you know, they, they start to see what's going on with our capabilities and they start to understand what these teams bring and what these players bring. I mean, look, I, I will be the first one to tell you, you know, when I'm standing next to, uh, you know, even though I only came up to about his damn shoulder, <laughs> Mike Tice, when, when he, That's <laughs> when he was out there, that is a tall you know, 6'8", but um, when I'm standing on the sidelines with him, and he is, I mean, this man was seriously entrenched in what was going on in the game. Yeah, he was, he was fully, he, he was fully engaged. For oh sure. yeah, he did not care about the rest of it, the the stuff that was going on outside. He literally told me, he "Goes look, man, uh, and, and excuse my language, but I got to paraphrase and and kind of say it the way he did." He told me flat out, he goes, "Look, I was looking for a shit show, and this is anything but. This is one of the best things I've seen." And he told and his wife, get me a beer. Yeah. We are staying. We're staying. We're not, because, I mean, he wasn't even supposed to be there. No. For the championship game. And he stayed to watch the whole thing. And, you know, hats off to Mike. He is um, one of the funniest people I've met. He is a great dude. And um, I enjoyed it. And, Mike, if you're listening, you know, let me know, because I would like to connect with you. I know that you're you're here in Vegas. So, um, we have to talk, but anyway, beyond that, to have the the stuff that happened in the championship game, and I know we've talked at it uh, about it at nauseum and yes. everything else. Yes, we have. But let's face it, that game was a um, a difference maker. That game really put Vegas in a different light, and that game put us to another level. And when I say that, I don't mean Vegas. I mean A7FL. Well, as I said that night, talking to the Jaffos, but by the way, shout out to JP, Country K, and uh, Mad Stick, the All-Pro Jaffos, friends of the program and friends of the league. As I told them, and as I said on more than one occasion, the league as a whole won on that night. We did. The league as a whole won. Yep. I, mean, I mean, yes, granted, us covering the Nevada division, obviously we have a little bit of a bias because you know we want our team representing our city to win, obviously. But with that said, even if it was the Nightcrawlers, but because the game was so, the game gave you everything that it had, all the players left their souls on that field that evening in Bullet City. But the league as a whole won, and it can only go up from there. And like I said, next next March we're celebrating our ten tenth years, season, man. and even though we haven't been here for the whole ten, and we're just coming into the third next year. But the fact is. They said they we wouldn't win right away. Yeah. I mean, well, it, well and the thing about it is I'm not going to get into um, everything that, that went on in the past. What I'm going to get into is what I see in the future. And what I see in the future is something that people have to start to pay attention to because – you know, when we talk about the NFL, the NFL is, let's face it, they own television, they own everything. And that's fine. But we also know that the players, you know, the no fun league, um, 
all these adjectives that they've used for what NFL stands for besides National Football League. But when I take a look at the people and the talent Vegas has, and, you know, Marcus said it, it's weird how when we talk about this, we talk about Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. It's not Nevada. It's Vegas. Mm -hmm. Vegas versus California. Vegas versus Arizona. Vegas versus Texas. Vegas versus anybody back east. Name it. But the fact of the matter is, you know, we have a, um, a, you know, teams coming on in Reno. We've got teams coming on in Cali. We've got um, teams coming on in other cities. And the, the great thing about that is we saw that jump after this championship game because people stood up and took notice. And I think that when we start to break that down, we have to start understanding what A7 really is. And, you know, when I think about it, I've got people literally on my Facebook page. And I haven't said anything. I don't, I, I don't have credentials on my Facebook page that I'm part of A7. Should I? Probably. But I don't. Um, I try to keep everything separate in case I, you know, throw a faux pas and say something I shouldn't on Facebook. I'm not incriminating A7. But at the same time, um, the fact of the matter is people know, the people that know I'm part of A7, they give me my props. They, they tell me things, and it's, trust me when I say it's much appreciated. Um, but I also look at things because I have guys hit me up and, and guys talk to me about all kinds of different things, life in general, football, everything. And I respect that. And I, I, you know, I'll always be there for them. Um, It's one of those things where you can look at yourself in a couple of different ways. I can look at myself and say, I am only the division manager. I'm cool with that. But why? Why am I putting myself into a box? Why am I pigeonholing myself? Um, I was asked to be part of this and I love it and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I look forward to my Wednesdays and the next two Wednesdays are going to kill me. Just so y'all know, I mean, being out of town is one thing, but you know, not being able to be on the show sucks. And, um, and you've made that clear more than one time. Oh, and, and I'll continue to make it clear. I mean, Quan, you got, you got to friggin', you got to give me a number I could call in, bro. And it, it definitely not this shit. I need a, I need a personal <laughs> number I can call in and be part of the damn show. Cause I mean, this, this is one thing that, you know, when, when I'm out of town, I want to still be able to talk to my boys. This is, you could just Skype in. Well, video I'm, calling. you know what? I'm, I'm, Give me the Skype, I'm in, because I'm not doing, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be away and not do this show, because I have too much damn fun doing this show. <laughs> well, so, a- as we come to the finish line, I'm about to run through the tape, um, to piggyback on what Chris said, um, I've said it ad nauseum more than one times, but I mean, you can definitely tell as you're watching that this is something we really do enjoy doing. Um, like I said, lifelong friendships have been made because of the show. Um, I came in here in March right before the season started. And like I said, Chris, among others, welcomed me in um, and accepted me. And now, like I said, this has become a genuine brotherhood just amongst us that do this show and do this panel. And then it ventured into meeting the Jaffos and bonding with them, meeting the 3 one guys and bonding with them, bonding with the production crew in New Jersey and bonding with them. I mean, yeah, we agree to disagree. We have our disagreements. That's just how it is in life. But at the end of the day, it's all about making sure that we put on a good product and put on a good show. And obviously by you guys watching us is basically telling us we're doing our job. We're doing our job. And for that, we are eternally grateful and appreciative to you for that. Because as I often say with the broadcast, we hope you enjoy watching as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. And I say that because I mean that because we really do hope you enjoy watching because we enjoy just that much bringing it to you talking about this brand of football, talking about this thing that is the American Sevens Football League. And granted, yes, it would be a lot more fun if we had our whole panel, which, you know, not to 
Pat me and Chris on the back, but we have held it down while yeah, our guys have been be, on assignment. We'd be dealing with butt naked booty scoots and <laughs> spitting in butts and all kinds of other stuff. Yes, Scotty, I miss you. Get your ass back here, man. <laughs> Freaking done with that. I need, I need my partner. I need my, I need my left hand. My right hand's good. I need my left hand, man. I need you back out here so that way I can hit you and, and tell you, okay, enough's enough. And you could give me that shit eating grin, but <laughs> I'm just saying, all right, I'm look, bottom line, Dub, you came over to the house last weekend. We talk about this. We joke about it. We could say whatever we want. When we say we're family, dude, that's real. I mean, you know, you came over. We hung out. We watched all the games. Nick, you were out of town. Damn it. If you were in town, you'd have been over at the house too. I know that. I'm not, I don't have to pull any punches on that. But the fact of the matter is I hit Scotty up. I'm like, dude, you still out of town? He's all, yeah. I said, you suck. <laughs> you know, that, that, was my, that was my last piece. To which week five Cowboys and Niners, I'll be at his house again uh, in, my, in my gear. Yep. And he'll be sitting on one side of the couch. I'll be sitting on the other and we'll be flipping each other off. So, I mean, it works out. But this is all part of the fun that we have in this show. And like I said, me not being part of the show, it kind of screws up my week because... You know, I take enough shit throughout the week and work and the pressure of work. This is fun. This is the happy zone. Yeah. And to, to come in here, give Quan a bunch of shit about eating pizza with pineapple is part of my fun. And, and uh, Scotty not being here, so I can't give him shit about butt naked booty scoots. But, bro, you got to leave them uh, St. Louis women alone. That's all I'm going to say. He's having too much fun He's, in his assignment. Dude, he is going to wind up getting himself into too much damn trouble. That's why his ass needs to bring his butt back to Vegas. So that's all I'm going to say. Scotty, leave them women alone. You don't know what they got? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Quan is plotting. You no, know, you can see Quan the look is, on his face. Quan you see the look on his face? Right he's like, yeah, I got something for you. <laughs> and I'm afraid to see what comes up because right now he's been putting up, you know, Charlie for know. you. I'm, I, afraid, I'm afraid of what he's going to put up for me. Well, you know how much Mr. Ojeda and, and Derek get a chuckle seeing Mr. Batch. But anyhow, um, oh, as yes. always, our special thanks to Quan. Of course, Blaze him down. Nick Blaze, a producer. And also another shout out to his son, Pierce, for holding it down last week while Nick, was on, Pierre, while Pierre. Nick was on assignment. <laughs> Special thanks to Mr. Alienator, Mr. Bobby Saliz. Uh, special shout out to Yodi Mac and Marcus, darling, for Marcus. coming on the show. Hopefully, now that Chris is going on assignment, hopefully I will have some panel help next week. But as always, we certainly hope you enjoyed watching as much as we enjoy bringing Butt it to you. Booty scoots. Oh, here he goes. Viking, come back home. <laughs> for the Viking Wait, really? on assignment. Really? Really, Quan? <laughs> really? Is that Canadian bacon too? Yes, and it I'm, is. And I'm freaking Canadian. That that that's About hurtful, bro. That's hurtful. Canada. That's hurtful. Just saying. Our Just saying. home and native land. Yeah, native, whatever. But <laughs> for Chris and his pineapple Canadian wow. bacon, <laughs> and for Charlie Batch. Charlie Batch. <laughs> Charlie. I'm, I'm double Charlie. Happy Uncle Charlie. Saying, uh, thank you for watching, and we will definitely see you on the other side of the ball. Asta.